Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Richie from Boston. It is the 8th of 8th of August in 2022. And I'm on Route 101 North heading towards... Oh, I just crossed into Oregon from California. But uh, I met up with a couple of subscribers in California. We hung out with them for a while, talked, blah, blah, blah. But I'm driving on Route 101. And it's late at night, and I'm looking for a place to camp for the night. And all the campgrounds are full. So I take a side road, which I almost never do. Because I try to stay on the main road so I don't get lost or, you know, I don't know. And I come across this old farmhouse. It's not an old farmhouse. It's a farmhouse. And it's red, and it's got a for sale sign outside. And I noticed there's a bunch of buildings, and to me, they look like the perfect building to find an owl in. So it's not dark yet, but it's getting late. So I creep into the driveway, and I don't know what the laws are. Like, can they, can they shoot you on sight for trespassing? There weren't any no trespassing signs, but there were a bunch of gates. And the gates were open, so... I went in, and I went up to this big barn, and the barn doors were open, and there was cars parked, you know, all around, dump trucks and farm trucks, stuff like that, and I, you know, I popped my head in, hey, hello, nobody answered, and then I saw a house, so I wander onto the property even more, still wondering if there's a shotgun pointed at me. And I knock on the door and nobody answers. And I'm like, wow, I guess nobody's here at all. Which sucks because they're probably going to pull in while I'm on their property. And I notice this road going up. And I'm thinking to myself, ah, let me see what's up there. I drive up there and there is a another house with a four-wheel ATV outside and a Dodge PT Cruiser. And I can see there's people in the house. So I, I wave, hello, and it's an elderly couple and three dogs. What looks like an English bulldog, like a Spuds McKenzie, a smooth coat, a smooth coat border collie, who's about a year and a half old, who ended up ripping my arm open pretty bad with his claws by accident, and an old fuzzy dog. I don't know what it was. And this couple, I said, hey, how you doing? Um, I'm, I'm traveling across the country, blah, blah, blah. And I saw you had a barn down there, way at the bottom of your property. I was wondering if, you know, I could pay you $20 or $30 to, to park there for the night. I said, I want to do a little bit of filming, to try to see if I can catch an owl. And they said, sorry, but no. And I said, okay, no, no problem. And the whole time, the woman's trying to give me a first aid kit for my arm that's bleeding really bad from the dog. And I kept saying, oh, don't worry about it. It's no big deal. I, you know, I got skin like a girl. Anything cuts me and I bleed, so no big deal. And they start talking, saying, you know, we'd like to let you stay, but we've had really bad issues over the years with... Uh, people to work on our farm because it's a massive, massive farm that has all sorts of trees and all sorts of different crops. It's got a uh, saltwater river going through it. It's, it grows myrtle wood, etc. Which myrtle wood only grows in this one specific spot in Oregon and then again in Israel. And if you read the Bible, one of the horsemen from the apocalypse will emerge from the myrtle wood trees. So that's crazy, and I did not know that at all. So, they say I can't stay there, but the old guy sits down and lights up a cigar and starts talking. So I sit down and start talking. And next thing you know, he says things like, We've been trying to sell the farm, and he showed me some paperwork. You know, the farm has been appraised at $7 million. And it's got like 10 buildings on it, three houses. It's amazing. And they're selling it for 
And the only reason they haven't sold it is because everyone that wants to buy it wants to grow weed, marijuana on it. And he wants someone to buy it to farm it like he's been doing for 22 years. You know what I mean? And he starts explaining to me that Americans have no idea what's coming. He said, there is going to be a famine in this country this winter on a biblical level. And I'm standing there going, I can't believe this old guy who's 80 just said this. So we continue talking and lo and behold, these people are on the, ex they don't know who I am, but they're on the exact same page. And this guy teaches the book of Revelations. <clears throat> He's on a cane, but he still fixes watches, fixes clocks, builds hot rods, and tries to work the farm. Now, they've tried to hire people to work on the farm, giving them a house, a literal house to live in, and paying them to work the farm. And what that resulted in was the people they hired taking advantage of them and robbing them, stealing gold and all sorts of other things from them. And then when they went to the police, the police said, well, do you have serial numbers on the gold? The guy's like, uh, no, because I've never even heard of that, serial numbers on gold, whatever, whatever. So, whatever. So, their fellow man that they tried to help out by hiring them to give them a, a decent wage to work an honest job robbed them. The police completely did nothing for them. And they're trying to do the right thing by selling this farm for less than a third of what it's worth. There's rights to log the entire top of a mountain that comes with the farm. The logging rights alone would cover the cost of the farm itself, but they don't want to sell it for just the logging rights. They don't want to sell it just so that people can grow marijuana, because when you're driving up and down the, the coast of the Pacific, there aren't really any mom and pop shops, unless it's pot. pot. There aren't really any mom and pop shops, unless it's pot. Pot is absolutely everywhere, and I get it. Some people think it's a medicine, etc. Great, that's terrific. But it's all there is absolutely anywhere. Billboards every place. Same thing on the East Coast. Do you smoke pot today? If you haven't, you should. That's a bit of an exaggeration, but they might as well say that. You see what I'm saying? At any rate, I befriend these people and I start making a video showing the pro you know, showing the property, etc. And I said, you know, I would have no issue with, you know, mentioning in a video that your property was for sale. And if anybody was serious about it, I would direct them to you, you know, no strings attached, no finder's fee, no commission, just because it's the right thing to do. And they said, cool. But prior to me saying that, they had already said, after talking to me, they said, yes, you can stay the night. No problem. Well, it turns out I've stayed there three times separately so far. And I now consider them friends. I mean, even though they're elderly, they're still friends. It's They're on the same page. The guy drove me around the property. He taught me what this tree was, what that tree was, and what that's, you know, that's from a bear. Bears will pull the bark down, and then they'll eat the, you know. He was explaining all sorts of stuff that I never learned growing up in the city. Things that I had an idea about because of my own research, but it was nice to hear it from somebody that grew up doing it. At any rate. I'm going to show some video of their property, and if anybody's happening to look for a place that is the ultimate self-contained bug-out location with your own mountain and your own access to a river that's loaded with fish and myrtle wood, literal myrtle wood, like in the Bible, two places, this one spot in Oregon and in Israel, and the horsemen of the apocalypse rides out of the myrtle wood trees. That is crazy. I have never once in my entire life stopped at some random house that I had no idea who it was and approached them to see if I could either A, stay on their property or B, film their property or whatever. And for some reason I did here. And this is what the guy told me. He said, an hour before you showed up, I prayed to God that he would present me with someone to witness to. 
and then you showed up, meaning me. And then everything that he said was something that was incredibly, quote unquote, coincidental to me or relevant to things that I was thinking about, talking about, or praying about. It was insane. Absolutely, utterly insane. How in the world will sup with somebody that lives in a town off the coast of New England end up in this guy's farm on the coast of the Pacific and they're on the same page? And it made me happy. A bittersweet happiness, but a happiness nonetheless that he said, America is going to face a famine like they've never seen before. Americans don't know what it is to go hungry whatsoever at all. Americans have so much access to cheap, GMO, high-calorie food that we are the fattest country in the world. You know what I mean? They have no idea what it's going to be like when there's no food. Anybody that knows how to grow their own food or how to make alternative food from not from a supermarket is considered a survivalist. You're labeled in this country. You're not just a person. You're a something. You're a survivalist. You're a prepper. You're a bug out. You know what I mean? The government labels us with these things, but then out of the other side of their mouth, constantly tell us to have months worth of food put aside in case, in case, in case. This guy John told me something while we were riding around in his ATV up on his property, which I'll show you footage of. I drove my truck up there and it was no joke. I stayed up there for the night and it was, he's like, you know, there's, there's bears and mountain lions, but, and I'm like, mountain lions? I said, mountain lions are big and sneaky. And he said, yeah, I just treat them like bears and they'll run away. So I stayed up there, but I gotta tell you, I was a little nervous. At any rate, we're driving around up there, and he says to me that when the food crisis comes, who's the first people that are going to be attacked? And I'm thinking, I don't know, bankers, politicians, food store owners, sporting goods, I don't know. He said Mormons. Because according to their religion, every Mormon is supposed to have seven years of worth of food put away in case of an emergency. And it never dawned on me. And if it did, I forgot. You know what I mean? But it was an absolute, complete and utter trip. I've never stopped at a, at a random house and asked if I could stay there. And when I show up, the guy said, I just prayed an hour before that God would send me someone to witness to. And I had just written, I had just read passages from the book of Mark. And this one really got to me. Jesus said, I'm not quoting directly, but Jesus said, it's not what a man puts into his body that defiles him. It's what comes out of a man's body that defiles him. And that really got me. That really, really got me. That one passage, it's not what a man puts into his body that defiles his body. It's what comes out that defiles his body. And if that's, if that's the case, which apparently it is, man, have I defiled my body. Worse than I already thought I did, because I have. I really have. I wish I could turn back the clock and know Jesus the way I do now my entire life. But I think if that had happened, I wouldn't be who I was today, I think. I don't know. I don't know. You know, hindsight's always 2020. At any rate.